Hey, let's talk about 10 things that waste time and mess up your sketches that I do and you might too. Here we go. Hey, Tyler Beck with Tech and Espresso today. First time waster I wanna talk about is not using the origin like you should. When I place a fully defined object in a sketch, this is a super simple one, but it doesn't know how it relates to the origin. So either I need to dimension down to that origin and give it the distance that it relates to the origin, or let's just connect it and make it coincident to the origin. When this goes all black, it's fully defined. And that's tip number two. You should have a fully defined sketch. And you wanna know why? They behave way better. When you don't have a bunch of dimensions and you don't have these relationships and constraints, so I'm gonna go back and remove those that are on the rectangle. When you think this is fully defined, this is what you want, it's so easy to mess this thing up. Look how it just drags away and gets messed up, as well as it's hard to relate to. And then when you're ready to edit it in the future, so you've got this cool block, you wanna go back and edit that original sketch. There's nothing to edit here. There's no dimensions, no constraints to keep it like you designed it to be, and it's so easy to mess up. So number three is accidentally starting another sketch. So I do this all the time. I think I'm working in this sketch and without kind of noticing it, I hit a new sketch. And when I look down at the design history, look at this second sketch that's showing up here, right? So we don't want that. I, if I'm trying to edit the original, make sure you're editing the one you care about. So one way to do that is right click on the sketch you care about, make sure you're editing it. It should have this finish sketch or this sketching um, option. The sketch palette will probably be available. That should, that's another indicator that you're working on that sketch, not to mention, as well as the sketch stuff should be showing up that you are editing that particular sketch you care about. Okay, the next one, I'm sketching a new component and you see it wants to snap to all these other entities when I'm trying to start my new sketch. And this can really mess me up sometimes. I add relationships, constraints that I don't want. And then you can see when I'm about to place it again, same thing. So if I hold Control or Command on the keyboard, it's now allowing me to sketch this freely without snapping. And that allows me to place it and then place a dimension so I can drive this how I want to. So a question I've gotten a bunch over the years is constraints versus dimensions. And the first thing is you should absolutely be adding dimensions and constraints, but what's the order? Well, I would encourage you, if you said I have a plate with four holes, right? So I sketch that those four holes, they're not lined up and you say the plate is rectangular. Okay, cool, I've drawn a rectangle and those constraints are in there already, uh, vertical and horizontal, good but you say the holes are all the same diameter. Okay, so I'm gonna make those equal by selecting them, making them equal. And you say that they line up in a rectangular fashion. There's a lot of ways you can do this. We can draw, we can sketch a rectangle and we can make sure that that rectangle is just a construction rectangle. So we can use that as um, kind of like a sketching guide. I like using this method and I can snap everything to the you know corresponding corners a little easier to drive it this way and then move it around great so we can do that we don't have to sketch this rectangle we could also just say this point is horizontal with this point this point and this point are vertical and that's the other way we can constrain it but so far i haven't placed a single dimension and there's a lot of intelligence here the next part might be that you say that these things are always centered um, kind of with relationship to the plate. So if I draw a sketch line there and make sure that it's vertical, that's gonna line this stuff up, you know, kind of centered. And then if we wanna center it this way too. But the point is you're hopefully you're seeing is constraints are incredibly powerful. And now it won't take me very long to get this dimensioned. Here's the diameters, here's the height of the plate. What are we missing? whatever I drag is still missing. So the kind of the height of this interior, the vertical and the width there. So maybe we want a dimension to this bottom edge. Maybe we want it always centered, it's up to us. So you can see the power of doing constraints first and then adding dimensions. 
Okay, the next one is failing to finish my sketches. And this kind of goes into two things. So when I'm looking at this, the extrude is not working. So when I hit extrude, it won't let me extrude this area. It'll let me do the circles for some reason, but it's not complete. And maybe you've seen my how to find errors video, but this is one of my favorite tips tricks is sketch lines across the uh, uh, sketch when i do this whatever if this lower portion's working that means the error is somewhere up here and as i drag this line it's showing me yep everything below this is great everything below is great so as i'm getting closer it looks like i failed to finish out the sketch or to extend my entities to where they connect and complete so two little tips there use that line method to find your errors but make sure you complete your sketch entities here's another obvious one that gets you and gets me is as i'm placing this this is a hundred by 125 and i extrude that i have this sketch and this looks great but then i go to measure it and it's 125 millimeters oh man it's supposed to be inches right so units are very important for when you're doing your sketches um, do keep in mind that regardless of the template that you started um, when you're placing a dimension you can always just type in 100 inch or 100 millimeter right and it will sketch that correctly now if you have done an entire model with the wrong units i did do a video how to go in and convert that correctly where all your sketches and features go together. I'll link that one up down below. Okay, number nine is putting the origin in a weird spot. All right, so when you look at this model and I look at how many features all come from right here, I've got a cylinder that extrudes, I've got this like keyway thing, I've got this cylinder at the top, that comes from here it looks like should be centered got a rectangular face that might even connect there the origin would be very advantageous to have right here it would be silly to put it off in space you know why because your three planes live at the origin so give some thought to where your origin gets placed i put this right in the center that ended up helping me i could have put it down in the corner but that would mean my three planes are here which may not be that helpful going forward what about when you take the time to sketch something out and get it just right right and this looks great but it's like an order of magnitude off so in instead of 70 this should have been 700 do 700 and look what happens the whole thing just kind of gets thrown out of whack and then if i try to add the next one it just gets worse right this is 950 and it just messes up so if you sketched it the right shape but you're just kind of off um, you know by kind of the general size of this one of my favorite settings that helps avoid this let's go back in time is the sketch thing go up to your preferences and in design there's this cool little checkbox scale the entire sketch around your first dimension i love this one so now when i place my first dimension at 700 the whole thing scales correctly and now it's going to be so much friendlier to work with and manipulate i love that one hey so if you're looking for some practice exercises check out this video and playlist i made for you I'll see you in the next video.